In this example, uh, we're going to find the domain of a couple of functions. Um, let's start with uh, part A. Uh, so we want to find the domain of this function f. Um, now we've seen already several examples uh, like this one. So you have an idea, I think, of where to start here. Uh, what we're going to be looking for uh, are values uh, uh, for x, values for the input uh, that will make the denominator of this fraction 0 uh, because we cannot divide by 0. And then we want to exclude those numbers from the domain of this function. So we can uh, uh, methodically uh, find uh, those values for x, uh, those input values that would make the denominator 0, uh, simply by taking uh, the denominator and uh, setting it to 0 and then solving uh, the resulting equation. Uh, when we set this denominator 0, we get a quadratic equation uh, because this equation has uh, uh, an unknown squared term in it, 4x squared. Um, and um, uh, so we have several techniques for solving uh, quadratic equations. Uh, one of them is factoring, and uh, another would be using the quadratic formula, and there are other techniques as well. Um, I'm going to try to solve this uh, equation by factoring. Uh, not all uh, quadratic equations may solve, can be solved by factoring, uh, but we can solve this equation by factoring because the expression on the left-hand side of this equation uh, will factor. Uh, it may take you a little bit of trial and error uh, to see how to factor this expression, um, and that's fine, uh, but it actually ends up factoring uh, as follows. Um, 4x uh, minus 7 uh, times um, x plus 1. So you can check that by uh, multiplying 4x minus 7 back through times x plus 1 and you'll see you get 4x squared minus 3x uh, minus 7. And so since we can factor the left hand side of this equation, um, then we know that one of those two factors uh, must be equal to uh, zero, because that's the only way that the product of uh, two quantities can be equal to zero is if one of the quantities is zero. So one of these factors, either 4x minus 7 has to equal zero or x plus 1 is equal to zero. And then we simply solve uh, these two uh, resulting equations. Uh, so uh, this uh, equation on the right, we can solve just by uh, subtracting 1 from both sides of the equation. So we get x equals minus 1. Uh, the second equation takes a couple of steps. First, we would add 7 to both sides of the equation. So we would get 4x equals 7. And then just uh, divide both uh, sides of the equation by 4. So we get x equal uh, 7 fourths. So what that tells us, uh, what the solutions to this equation tell us is that uh, if we substitute either one of these values for x uh, in this uh, expression, uh, in this formula, we're going to end up with a denominator of 0. And since we can't divide by 0, we know that these two numbers, 7 fourths and minus 1, cannot be in the domain of this function f. So uh, we can write out the domain of our function uh, by saying that um, uh, the domain is all uh, real uh, numbers except uh, these two uh, numbers that are going to make uh, the uh, denominator of this fraction uh, 0. So our domain would be all real numbers except 7 fourths uh, and negative uh, 1. All right, uh, now let's look at our next example, which is very, very similar. So uh, we want to find the domain of this uh, function g. Um, and the formula for this function g is very similar to the formula for that function f in part a. Uh, so uh, we'll attempt, attempt to uh, find uh, this um, uh, domain uh, simply by, again, finding the values for x uh, that will make the denominator of this fraction 0. And since, since we can't divide by 0, excluding uh, those numbers from the domain of the function g. So we can systematically uh, or methodically find uh, those uh, values for x that are going to make the denominator 0 just by taking our denominator, 3x squared minus 3x minus 7, and setting that equal to 0, and solving the resulting equation, which again turns out to be a quadratic equation, since we have the unknown x squared term uh, in this equation. Now, in this case, however, I don't think this expression on the left-hand side of the equation is going to factor easily. So we're going to have to resort to a little bit more sophisticated technique for solving this quadratic equation. We're going to use the quadratic formula. So in some of the other examples, 
um, uh, uh, we have uh, uh, maybe more detailed uh, uh, solutions uh, to quadratic equations uh, using the quadratic formula. Here I'm going to move rather quickly. Uh, to use the quadratic formula, we need to identify the coefficients uh, in the um, equation. Oh, by the way, we also need to have the equation set equal to zero, which we do in this case, of course. Uh, so we need to identify the leading coefficient a, a, usually labeled as a, which is three in this case. Uh, the second coefficient, that's the coefficient of the x to the first power term, uh, which in this, which is usually labeled b, and in this case, that's going to be minus three. And then the constant coefficient, uh, which is usually labeled C uh, in this example, that's minus seven. I think for, I think I forgot to say that uh, the leading coefficient is always the coefficient of uh, the unknown square term in the equation. And of course, you're gonna have such a term in a quadratic equation. All right, so once you've identified the three coefficients in your quadratic equation, then you can substitute them into this uh, quadratic formula. And that gives you, the formula gives you uh, uh, the solutions to the quadratic equation, and there may be as many as two of them. All right, so let's uh, apply this quadratic formula to find the solutions to this uh, quadratic equation. So our two solutions, or our solutions, there may be two of them, uh, to this uh, quadratic equation are going to be uh, minus b, so that's minus a minus three, and then plus or minus, that's how we get the two solutions, possibly, uh, to our quadratic equation. Uh, b squared, so that's minus 3 uh, squared, minus 4 times the leading coefficient a, which is 3, times the constant coefficient c, which is minus 7. And then all of this divided by our uh, twice our leading coefficient a. All right, now let's simplify this expression somewhat. So we have minus a minus 3 is 3, positive 3, plus or minus. Uh, the square root of uh, negative 3 squared is 9. And then minus 4 times 3 is negative 12. But negative 12 times negative 7 is positive 84. So we're going to end up with 9 plus 84 underneath the square root. And then all of this is going to be divided by 2 times 3 or 6. So we have two possible solutions to our uh, quadratic equation. One of them is 3 plus this square root. Uh, and then divided by 6, and the second one is 3 minus this square root divided by 6. Let's go ahead and add the 9 and the 84 together. So we end up with 3 plus or minus the square root of 93 divided by 6. There are the two solutions to our quadratic equation. One of them is 3 plus the square root of 93 divided by 6, and then the second one is uh, 3 minus the square root of 93. Uh, divided by uh, 6. And so that indicates then for us uh, what the domain of our function g is going to be. Uh, it's going to be all real numbers except for these two real numbers uh, because if you substitute either one of these two real numbers for x in this formula, you'll end up, believe it or not, uh, with that denominator uh, uh, turning out to be zero, and so you'd end up with five divide, divided by zero, which is undefined. So these are the two numbers that we must exclude from the domain of our um, function g. All right, so let me write that uh, domain here. Um, it's going to be uh, all real numbers, except for these two real numbers, which will make the denominator of our formula uh, zero. So all real numbers except uh, three plus the square root of 93 divided by six, and then uh, three minus the square root of 93 uh, divided by six. Even though 93 is not a perfect square, uh, the square root of 93 is a real number. So 3 plus the square root of 93 over 6 is going to be a real number. Uh, 3 minus the square root of 93 over 6 is also going to be a real number. Uh, but they're not going to be in the domain of uh, the function uh, g.